Okay, so... Um... Right, so I think the next step is to go back to the old code. Um, I, I don't... Like, ultimately, a lot of the things that are in the app right now are going to be going away because they're going to be doing... You know, happening a different way, right? But in the short term, I don't want to break the existing app, but I also don't want to have this unnecessary duplication where we have... Like, I, I want to refactor this so that we can use it in a new thing, but keep the old thing and keep them in sync, right? So that's that's the thinking here. So because of that, what I want to do is now that we have uh, audio extraction, uh, this extract function existing, I want to uh, use it over here. And uh, that should be straightforward-ish, right? So instead of uh, calling this, uh, we, instead of doing this, we're going to match, um, let's see, how's this going to, how's this going to look? This is going to be like G T F F P audio extraction extract. Uh, something like that. <laughs> and then uh, save that and see what it yells at us about, right? So now this is not, um, this is a result, right? So we want to uh, match OK. And then we are attempting to, yeah, STD out isn't, uh, There can be no error because it is STDIO. It's not a, it's not a maybe. Uh, so this goes away and this just becomes audio. That, that is a nonsense comment that uh, Copilot is trying to give us. And then uh, this is not okay. This is error E. And we'll trace it. like that cannot find oh right STV app. there we go all right so this file got simpler and uh we get some things saying hey you can use flatten and we don't need this import anymore okay cool so that's Audio extraction, right? So if we go back to the, the list of things. Uh, so we're trying to do audio extraction. We're trying to do FF probe to get the file metadata for the, the video file. And we want to extract keyframes. So keyframes is a new thing. Uh, we don't have an existing code for. So this this will be a new thing. Uh, we'll just call it keyframes extraction. Uh, RS. Uh, and how is this going to work? I don't know. <laughs> Extract keyframes from a video file. Arguments will be the path. Uh, what are the arguments might I want to provide to here? I'm not sure yet. We might want to have some other parameters dictating how uh, FFmpeg is going to work. This is definitely wrong. Um, like, I guess we could have something that like identifies the frame numbers where the keyframes are, but what I want to do instead is I want to actually, um, like extract the keyframe images, something errors and errors return. Yes. Ooh, hello. GM Kanye West just followed. GM Kanye West, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Uh, okay, so this has some code for us. Copilot has, has generated something. Do I believe this will work? Um, so we do some tracing. 
don't like how it chose to give a, a unit result on the, the okay path. And we have a, a, a box of some kind of error. The error path. This. Um, I think this select might be wrong. I'm not sure. What are the other? What's the difference between these? Uh, GM uh, Kanye West says, how is interacting with MPEG, uh, FFmpeg and Rust? I want to use Rust uh, for my new project that uses FFmpeg, but I don't know if I should use Rust over like Python with the uh, FFmpeg board. I, um, it's interesting because like, it, it's okay. So in some ways it's kind of, uh, I, I like how things shook out with, um, uh, here I'm using FF probe, right? So I'm using, uh, Tokyo process command and I'm calling FF probe with arguments and you know, it's structured argument passing. Like you see in other, uh, libraries and languages. Um, and then we end up with like a, a future, uh, and we can, we can parse it. So, um, let's see, what are we doing here? Right. Remember, right, right. so, uh, we get a string from STD out and then we're able to use JSON parsing with survey, uh, survey JSON to parse this. And we just have a, a struct that defines the shape of the output. So up here. We have a struct, and this is basically all the fields in the JSON output from FF Probe. So I just have it, um, in this case, I can have it output JSON because that's an option for FF Probe, right? JSON for the print format. And it works pretty well. Um, and then for like audio extraction, where I'm just trying to get an audio track from it, I have something similar here um, where I'm you know, just building the command line parameters for it. And then I'm piping STD out, right? So I'm just having uh, FFmpeg um, hide banner and then output a WAV file format to STD out and then uh, piping that elsewhere. So I don't think that's, I feel like that's very similar to what you might do by hand. I think there are probably crates that do some work for you for Rust as well. So if we look at, uh, was it cargo.io? Nope. Crates.io? You think I know at this point. <laughs> there we go. There's probably a FFmpeg one. Uh, I just didn't bother. There you go. Safe FFmpeg wrapper. Um, so this is four years ago. Okay. Um, so I've not tried any of these. I probably should. I think at the end of the day, if, um, unless you like for me I'm trying to answer your question, um, because I set out on this project specifically to refresh my knowledge of rust and build on my knowledge of rust, um, that motivated me to do what I'm doing. If you're just trying to get something done and you know, Python and you're not trying to learn rust or, you know, rust, you want to learn Python, then there you go. Right. If you want to learn a language, find an excuse to have a project where you're going to use that language. Um, and then you'll learn all about the works of like, uh, it, um, I, I don't feel that there is anything really besides the overall, like, you know, you have, um, a more, um, The, the, the typing in Rust is more strict, right? And that can be a pro, uh, that can be a benefit to you, but it can also be a distraction uh, when you're just trying to prototype something, right? Um, like if we were doing all of this, I mean, honestly, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now with the FFmpeg, I could probably just do in a, in a like a shell script, right? Yeah, you just want a reason to use Rust. There you go, there's a reason. Um, this code, by the way, is in, uh, is a, a public GitHub repository. Let's see if this command works. Nope. Is my bot broken? Possibly. Let's see. Uh, 
Streamlabs. Yeah, if you if you don't pay Streamlabs, then they occasionally just like shut off the bot. And then the tab clubs. That's so weird. One second. Ah, uh, bot. At some point, oh no, it is active. Okay, was that not the command then? What are the co what are my commands? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, ba, 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 ba. There's a command command for that. There we go. That works. Um, ba, ba, ba. Do I not have a link to the GitHub? Has a command in here? Yeah, I don't know. I guess not. Um, it is it's called Glowing Telegram. It's saved in slash Glowing Telegram uh, in on GitHub. There you go. Um, and there's a bunch of existing code buried inside of like API, SRC, um, FF probe. Although some of that will be prefactored. So if you want. <laughs> If you want to see a little bit of that, that's there. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, but it's it's basically what you see on, on on screen. It's nothing super fancy. It's just trying to get stuff done. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. I I think maybe I had because I had been doing some research on this idea of getting keyframes. frames. Let's see if I have a link somewhere. It's not. Okay. Uh, let's see. FFmpeg. FFmpeg. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Extract keyframes. Hey, I've been here before. Gotta follow, follow the breadcrumbs. Uh, so. I like less. It takes less than 10 seconds on a 20 minute video. Um, I would not use skip frame no key. I can make this bigger because it's probably not readable on, on stream. Um, no key gives me the preceding frame before the iframe while the non-filter all shows the iframe sound. Uh, threads one. Um, ultimately what, like the, what I want to do, why I want to do the thing that I'm trying to do is that, um, I do want to have, so we have a video file. We have actually a bunch of video files, like every stream I generate, like, um, what, at least eight or nine video files because they're like 20 minute segments. And what I want to have is the ability in the front end that we're going to eventually build for this app, the ability to preview the timeline and have like images showing the, the timeline of the video from the stream. Um, and I want to just like pre-compute that, right? I'm going to have the video file. Yeah, we may edit it, slice it up, whatever, but we can generate some thumbnails of uh, different points in the video. And I think this whole extracting um, iframes is what we want to do. Um, here they're trying to use the select filter, which is what Copilot also suggested, mm, excuse me, for us. So select equal pick type I. So this will, I think the idea is that this picks up frames where the the whole like frame of the, the whole image of the video is present, right? Because you have like a keyframe and then you have kind of the, the diff over time until the next one. 
And so I think that's what this is trying to do. What's going to be interesting is actually parsing the output. There we go. Here's using select and scale filters. And to be fair, we probably do want to scale the image. We don't need the full like uh, 1440p uh, resolution image in the output. There are a lot of uh, a lot of votes for this answer. So we can probably try this one. Now, what do all the options do? Um, I don't know. I guess we should go look at the FFmpeg docs and find out. Uh, docs, there we go. Probably better to know. Imagine that. So what does skip frame do? Skip frame, no key. I don't suppose this is all, it's not, it's not all in, okay. Maybe it is, but. Is there, is there a place where I can see all options? The skip frame is not present here. Let's try something different. FFmpeg. <laughs> Skip frame. Oh. FFmpeg all. Great. There is a place. Okay. Skip frame integer. Makes decoder discard processing depending on the frame type selected by the option value. Uh, so. No key. Discards all frames except key frames. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, input would be the input video file. Uh, Vsync zero. So, Vsync. Uh, Vsync zero is necessary to prevent FFmpeg from duplicating each output frame to accommodate the originally detected frame rate. So in other words, like if we have a frame rate of 60 frames per second, if we're only selecting keyframes, we don't want to duplicate the keyframes to keep it at 60 frames per second. That makes sense. Uh, dash R. Um, What's the frame rate of the input file to one FPS and the frame rate of the output file to 24 FPS? Okay, so the dash R before I sets the frame rate of the input to one. So here, because it's after the input, we're setting the output frame rate to 30. What does that do when we are Generating thumbnails, I wonder. I guess maybe what we should do is actually try this command on a video file and see see what it does. Imagine that. Imagine doing that. Um, okay. Let's uh, let's do this. Go grab a video file. You don't need to see that. <laughs> uh, reveal in File Explorer. See that. Let me go find a smaller video. We don't need to process a, uh, a six gigabyte MKV file. How about a. Ooh, only 1.4 gigs. Okay, sure. Test. Like copy. All right. So, the command in question. So, what would this do? Uh, 
Uh, let's do this. Uh, LS. Okay, so we have ep109.mp4. This is one of my rendered uh, episodes for YouTube. So what, what will this do? If I run it, do I have FFmpeg installed? I do. So it generates a bunch of thumbnail images, presumably. Uh, let's see, deprecated pixel format use. Make sure you did set range correctly. Okay, so maybe it doesn't like F image two. Let's go look at the docs. Dash F. Format. Image two. We have a list of formats. Image file, the muxer, this the muxer reads from a list of image files specified by a pattern. A5, fog incarnation and max difficulty. It's keeping you on your toes, brainless. Uh, so image two is an image file the muxer, huh? But, well, like, I, I have this idea in my head. Yeah, okay, demultiplexer. Media demultiplexers are not decoders themselves, but are format container handlers that separate media streams from a container file and supply them to like individual files, right? Okay, so that took um, not too, too long. And if I look in test now, yeah, we have a bunch of thumbnails. Looks like this. Do I want this many? Like this, this should be like a, how, how, how long is this video? I'm getting a meta here. It's a 23 minute video. All right. All right. <laughs> In a 23 minute video, we have, uh, four, yeah, 1,440 images. That seems that seems good. I don't know about having so many though. Also, these images are, are rather large, right? Because they are. I mean, I think maybe JPEG could be fine for a preview. Um, but the resolution of these are yeah, the the raw video image resolution. So. Let's uh, let's refine the command. I think it's, what's going to be interesting here is I think having it dump. I don't want to open the files. I want to right click. Wild. You see that? <laughs> I wasn't even trying to open the file. I just want to delete them. And it's like, are you sure you want to open these files? Nonsense. Okay. Anyway. While it's doing that, um, so how do we, so I'm assuming like if I do R15, maybe we'll get fewer files. I think like 1500 ish is a lot for this. I was thinking I might go down to like maybe five. And then can we set the output resolution? Uh, video size. Set the video size of the images to read. Well, we're not reading. We're writing. I think maybe the stack overflow thing, there was a comment. Make sure to use threads Sequence of the output keyframes can be issued out of order. So I don't, 
I don't think that should be an issue if we have it just outputting the individual files and then we read from the file system, which is definitely not going to be an issue because we're going to be using AWS BAP. So we're going to have like a, um, a container running on an EC2 instance uh, that's doing this versus like something in a Lambda where we might be concerned about how much disk space we have. Um, Vsync zero is important. Um, add frames PTS true. What's that do? What's frames PTS do? If set to one, expand the file name with the packet PTS presentation timestamp. Interesting. Is there is there an example of that being done? Oh, I see. Okay. That could be good. Um, so we want the output size to be different though. A scale filter. Like 73 or 41 to filter, calculate. Oh, to preserve aspect ratio, I see. Ah. Oh. Yoink. Let's try this. So. don't need the select we're going to want the scale and um, so this is width and height right so the images are gonna be pretty small on screen how small I don't know let's try uh, 200 by is it was it negative one to preserve aspect ratio According to this comment, so let's let's try this. Um, maybe instead of JPEG, so JPEG or PNG. Let's try PNG. Okay, so now we should just have one file. Checks out. That command does not work. <laughs> uh, did not like that. Using VSync and dash R FPS Max can produce invalid output files. Okay, so maybe we don't need a dash R. Okay, still doesn't like it. Um, it does not like filter scale with arc 200x negative one. Uh, oh yeah, it's not an X, it's supposed to be a colon, oops. All right, so in our test folder, at some point, yeah, we'll start seeing video or images. They're so tiny, but they're they're 26 KB, except for this one. Uh, this must have been mid-transition. 15 kilobytes, but we have a lot, um, and we're probably still generating, right? I mean, I would imagine it would be the same number. Yeah. No. Yeah, that makes sense. What, um... So like on a full... I mean, so this render is what did I say like 23 minutes so that's about the same size um, same length as like one of the video files that we're processing do I want to spawn 1400 uh, images does it matter how big is the whole shebang yeah yeah I do want to open 
open, open lang. Uh, yeah. In the grand scheme of things, it's 30 megabytes, right? When we're talking about like multiple gigs of data from the video file. So I guess it's not that big of a deal. Um, and it will mean that we'll have a lot of like, um, what we'll be able to do is like, if we zoom in on the timeline in the, in the front end, we'll have a lot of thumbnails to use to populate. So we'll have, you know, some granularity for the video. So that is not bad, not a bad thing. Okay. So I think that command works. Uh, so let's CD out of that. And uh, go back over here and delete. Permanently delete. Yes. Goodbye. All right. On with the show. Uh, let's see. So. All right, we, we've not added keyframes extraction to lib.rs, which is why this is all grayed out, and that is fine, right? So we're gonna take this command and we're going to um, add things here. Yep, I path. So uh, let's see, vsync zero. So here's the thing that could be an option, right? Instead of hard coding it, we could have a parameter here for scale. Um, hmm, actually, yeah. If negative one is passed, height. There we go. The, uh, yeah, 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 width and height. Okay, we could do that. Um, and then dash F, image two. We're not going to pipe output. Uh, frame PTS true. Uh, thumbnails dash uh, percent D dot PNG. Okay, so we're gonna do something like let output path, definitely. What we're probably going to want to do is um, like have a temp folder and then put this on the end of the path to that temp folder. Uh, and then what else do we wanna do? We wanna add our arguments here for width and height. Can you do default arguments in Rust? No. Okay. Um, so I is is signed. Oh, we didn't say default. We just said if you've passed negative one, then okay, that makes sense. And then uh, what we do is we do format. Um, is this equivalent to what we had before? Yes. Cool. Okay. So we are not trying to read STD out though. So we don't care about that. What we want to do is we want to, um, do something else. Okay, so other things we want to do, we want to uh, create temporary directory to store the keyframes. Does that? Yeah. Okay, we should. Let, let's. Um, how do we? How do we join paths in Rust? Oh, there we go. Uh, sure. PNG. 
PNG. Now maybe that actually works or not. Let's let's add hub mod keyframes extraction. Now we'll start getting errors. Behold, what's wrong? Uh, oh yeah, we're not. Uh, let's 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 pretend that we're okay. Everything is okay. Uh, we need to import commands from Tokyo process command. We need to import temp file. We need to add temp file to Kurgatomel. Is temp file a thing that exists? I'll be lazy and just try to add it. Uh, maybe. Okay, maybe not. Let me go look for temp file. Things you probably shouldn't do. Guess the name of a package that exists in your package manager. Add it without checking what it is. And then start using it. Uh, so temp file here, 3.12. Pretty close. Um, that's just saying, maybe we just say three, sure. Uh, da, 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 da. Temp file, temp file, unwrap. Okay, so we're think it's gonna be unhappy about that. Let's check out the repository where this code is coming from. So we have an issue that says, hey, this is hacked. No. <laughs> I'm gonna close the issue. Okay. Seems legit. Uh, last commit last month, Apache 2 license. Seems fine. Okay, so we should actually, uh, okay, it's not actually async, at least right now. So let's get that warning away. We're not actually doing anything with keyframe extraction process. Um, oh yeah, we can put width and height inside of the string for format. We don't have to do parameters. Okay, so if we only have the one warning here for this, that makes sense. We, we haven't done anything with this yet. Um, oh yeah, we have the question mark here. Okay, that makes sense, right? So if this fails, it results in the function returning uh, an error. And that all, that all works. Okay, cool. So uh, what do we do from here? Well, we need to wait for this process to complete. Yep. And then, uh, then we want to, what do we want to do? Do we want to return a list of the files that it generated? Like the paths to the files. Um, that does mean that whatever calls this is responsible for any kind of cleanup that we want to do. It's not going to matter in this case because we're going to be running in the container that it's going to get deleted when finished. Theoretically, uh, that's what should happen. So that seems fine. Um, that does mean our result is going to change. So we're going to change return here. Um, a, a vector that passes the keyframes. And so now our result is going to be different. Let's see if I can get Copilot to write that for me. Uh, interesting. What is a path buff? An owned mutable path akin to a string. Interesting. We are using path buff here. What's, uh, oh, I see this, this, this squiggly line here has nothing to do with this line. It has to do with this line, but we, we've moved, uh, the, we changed which lines are which, so it's, it's out of date. Okay. So how do we wait for this process to finish? I guess we call wait. If it, uh, was not successful, we return an error. Sure. 
Uh, and then we return the path to the keyframes. So we say, let keyframes be read DIR from temp DIR. Uh, we grab the path for each. Um, Maybe, maybe. We probably want to filter. So let me save that really quick. Inverts result to option. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, so here's an example where they call read JIR and they map and they collect sort. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, what is visit DIRs? So you get a DIR. So how is how is visit DIRs used? Wait. Oh, these are multiple examples. I see. So there is a is DIR, there might be a is something else. Uh, so let's is huh. oh I see. Do you want to do that? And what is path? Oh, we have to call await. Aha! Which means this doesn't need to be async. After all. Yes, and then not happy about types. That's fine. Let's um let's fake it for a minute. Uh yeah, sure, something like that. What's the problem here? Uh, cannot borrow keyframes extraction process as mutable. It's not declared as mutable. Uh, that sort of makes sense. Oops. There you go. Okay. Um, so. Wow, does that work? That That is type compatible with, oh yeah, path buff. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, I do want to like filter though, because I only want files, right? Like if we, let, let's look at the docs for read DIR. I'm assuming read DIR might also return like dot and dot dot as entries in the folder. Um, we could also sort might want to also sort that might be nice for uh yeah so let's get rid of this we're gonna call dot collect on this and then keyframes dot sort okay keyframes now uh it doesn't like that because we are doing something yeah yes it needs to be a vector of something Uh, and it needs to be mutable because we're mutating. <laughs> Imagine that. I think that might work. Okay. We're done with that buffer. So I think we have all of the functions that we need to do the work. Now we just got to put it all together. Uh, right, so audio extraction, keyframes, FF probe. Uh, so we're gonna create a new crate. We go new bin. Uh, what are we gonna call this? Um, in the other project, I had started to kind of outline how this would work, and I just called it video processing. 
That is kind of an inadequate name. Uh, video ingestion. Video inge ingester. Like something that ingests the video. Let's do it. All right, so that's now that's part of our workspace, and uh, that means we can like import GTF of MPEG. And the idea is going to be in here that we're going to refer to uh, GT of MPEG. Uh, how do we do that? How did API do that? I forget. I ah, like this. Yoink. Um, we're almost certainly going to need at least Tokyo. Is that true? Um, maybe not. Maybe not. What what dependencies do we need? Um, one thing that we did add was Figment. Configuration management. I don't know that we're going to need that. Okay, let's just leave it at this for now. And then in main.rs, we have a hello world. Um, so, what's this complaining about? Uh, it's complaining about other packages. Great. do something about that later uh so how do we get uh how do we do command line arguments in uh in rust there's the rust book uh reading argument values so there's std and b and that has args there Let's just keep scrolling so we just read the first argument right or the, the second argument presumably the first argument is the name of the program that is args sub zero yeah first value is the name of our binary yeah. same as in c the figure okay um Yeah, let's let's do that. So uh, we're gonna do something like this, except different. Uh, so we're gonna say bucket and key. We're missing. Uh, keys. There we go. All right. So job one done. <laughs> Oops. Uh, look out. The list. Where is the list? Okay. Uh, so we need to get an object from S3. Uh, we had... Um, I get... Was that in... Uh, yes. In start step function lambda from our, our test project. We have some examples of interacting with AWS. Here. Um, just like the what we were doing in the Lambda over here, we're going to assume the environment that we're running in is going to provide relevant configuration, including the region and all that stuff. So we should be able to take basically this code and uh, bring it in here. Let me do that first. Uh, this can be an async function, hopefully. Yes. Uh, and we're going to need at least this. Okay. And we're going to look at cargo Tomal to see, yeah, AWS config. Um, and we're going to need an AWS SDK of some kind. Oops, I didn't copy. There we go. 
uh, that. Yes, S3. That is not the right version, though. Let's go over to... Uh, I still have the tab somewhere. Let's go back to... Creates that IO. Uh, cool. Uh, so we're gonna interact with S3. We're also gonna act, interact with DynamoDB. Uh, DynamoDB. It exists. Hopefully it's the same version. Nope, they have different versions. Great. Uh, what else do we need? So we're interacting with S3. We're interacting with DynamoDB. I think that's it for this uh, program. It's gonna be running in batch, but it doesn't need itself to like talk to batch at all. It's just going to be in a Docker image. It's gonna be run as a container. It's gonna do things. Uh, so that should be good. Save that. Uh, okay, so uh, let's kind of outline what I'm going to do here rather than just letting it letting it go. Um, we don't need this. We do need S3 client. So I guess I will do a little bit of setup here before I start writing comments. B client. This what's the saying? Uh, when create for AWS service, you must add Tokyo as a dependency within your Rust project to execute synchronous code. Uh, yeah, behavior version latest Tokyo. Yeah, make sure that AWS config has that. Let me just copy all of this. It doesn't. Okay, cool. So. object from the bucket not get another object from the bucket then we need to um, I think do a few things in parallel in parallel not get the object from the bucket that's what we're doing go pilot what, what are you thinking about um, I have it written down here so why would I write it again uh, ffmpeg for audio extraction so do audio extraction and keyframes and then FF Pro for metadata. Do audio extraction to a uh, temp file. Extract keyframes and uh, use FFM Pro uh, FF Probe uh, to get metadata. Insert the metadata into a DynamoDB table. Uh, upload the keyframes to the S3 bucket. Upload the audio to the S to the S3 bucket um, and S3 bucket. This is where we're going to need Figment. We're going to need some configuration, probably probably via environment variables. Um, yeah, so let's add Figment. Don't need the Tommel feature. I don't know. Let's see. Do we have another record Tommel handy? That's the right version. Okay. Oh, that is the okay. Cool. So um, somewhere in here, we configuration with Figment, and then parse command line arguments. Okay. So we're going to take a break here and in our third segment of the stream today, 
Um, we're gonna actually do all of the stuff that I've just outlined in uh, comments. We're hopefully gonna be able to build that into a Docker image, ship that to AWS Batch, and actually see this in operation. Uh, that reminds me, I do need to tear down the old environment over here. Balloon stack, right? Because we still have this. So this needs to be destroyed. So we'll do that also after the break. BRB. Export. Uh, and we added some loading stories. 